Hello and welcome back. We're going to be continuing to work on our typing game by creating a word bank. In the last video we did the bulk of the work on our typer and now we need to create a word bank and then connect those two things together. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into our hierarchy and right click and we're going to create a new object that's going to hold our word bank. Let's reset our transform here and we're going to need to create a new script for that. And we're just going to call it word bank. Believe it or not, make sure we capitalize the B on that. Then we'll go to that game object we created. We'll rename this as well to word bank and let's attach that script. Then go to our prefabs folder so we can create a prefab out of our word bank. And now we're going to want to open up both our typing script as well as our word bank script. All right, and now that we're in our word bank script, we're going to have a couple of lists that are going to contain the words that we're going to be trying to complete. We're going to create a function for shuffling the words so each time we play, they're going to be a different order, as well as a couple of helper functions. So the first thing that we need to do is create a list for the original list of words that we're going to want to complete. Now, usually you could create something a little bit more advanced than this, where you can accept a text file or something like that to populate this list, but obviously we're going to keep it pretty simple. So we're just going to hard code a list right here. And we're going to just start with a private list that we're going to call string. And we're just going to call it original words, because the thing is, once our game actually starts, we want to copy everything in this list to another list. And then as those words are completed, we're going to be removing it from that secondary list. So we know when the game has ended, once we've completed all those words and they've been removed from the list. So let's create a new list. Where we just need to type whatever we want here. And I'm just going to say pancakes, not pancake, are delicious. There we go. Perfect. So those are the words I'm going to put in there. You can put whatever list of words that you want. And then we're going to have another private list of the same type. And we're going to call this working words. I guess because they have jobs or something. There we go. And we're actually not going to need this start or this update function, so we can get rid of those. But we will need an awake. So we'll make an awake function. And then let's just write these signatures for our other functions we're going to need. We're going to need one to shuffle our list. So we'll just call that shuffle. Where we're just going to be passing in a list. We're going to want to convert all of the characters in each of our words to make sure that they're lowercase. Now you could probably negate this step, but like I said before, if you're potentially pulling in words from a different source, you want to make sure that they're all lowercase. So this can come in handy there as well. And we're just going to call this convert to lower, where we'll be passing in a similar argument. And then finally, we're going to have a public function for getting a word from our word bank. So it's going to be returning a string and we're just going to call it get word. And we'll just return nothing for right now. Okay, cool. So let's go into awake. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is take everything that's in our original words list and add it to our working words list. So we can do working words, add range, and put in our original words. Now, we're using add range instead of just setting it equal to because all that's going to do is it's going to pass it by a reference. So anytime we change anything on this working words list, it's going to affect the original words list as well, which we don't want. This effectively copies all of those strings over to a new list. And then after that, we want to convert all of them to lowercase, where we're going to be passing in that working words list, and then we're going to shuffle them. There we go. Let's actually do shuffle first, since that's the order those functions are in. And this is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to create a for loop that's going to go through all of the strings in the list that we're passing in. And the first thing that we want to do is get a random integer using random.range. And we're going to get that between the current number i and the count of the list. 
And this just ensures that each of the items within our list is going to end up at a new place in the order. And what we're going to want to do with this new random integer that we have is we want to get the string that's currently in that spot. So we're going to create a string variable called temporary. We're going to get our list and we're going to use that random or we're going to use that i integer. So as soon as this loop begins, we're going to try and find an integer between zero and the entire count of the list. In our case, we have three. So it's going to be between zero and two. And then we're temporarily going to want to store that first string within our list. And this is because we're going to shuffle it with another object within our list. And you'll see that in just a second where we use our list, our i, and then we'll access our list again and we'll use that random number we generated. So we're going to be moving that first string within our list to a random number that we generated. And then we want to move that string that's in that random position to that of i. So do random and we're going to use that temporary variable. And we have that temporary variable because naturally if we don't store it before we start moving things around, we're not going to have a consistent result. And that's actually it for our shuffle function. Let's go down to our convert lower, where this is actually pretty simple, where we're going to create another for loop, where we're going to go through all of the strings within our list. Probably could have just copied the one from up top, but that's okay. We'll get to spend a little bit more time together. And we're going to say list. We're going to use that index i. We'll do the same thing. And since this is a string, we can access the to lower function. And that's pretty much it. So we don't have to go through each of the characters. We can just say, hey, all the characters in the string, just make sure you're lowercase. Now let's go down a little bit further here so we can look at our get word a bit better. And the first thing that we're going to need here is a string that we're going to call new word. And we'll initialize that to an empty string. And one thing I forgot to add is we have a namespace up at the top. So let's go up there where we're going to be using link queue, which is just a fancy thing for filtering lists. And we're going to be using that to access the last object in a list, which is a little bit cleaner than doing the complete count of the list minus one. I just think it looks a bit cleaner. But what we can do is we can have an if statement here that says if we have words left, meaning the current count of our working words list is not equal to zero, let's get the last word on the list. And we're specifically getting the last word instead of the first one. So when we're getting things from it, we're not making all the other strings in that list shift down since we're just pulling off the end. And we'll set that new word variable to our working words list. And we're going to be getting the last thing in it. Since we're using link queue, we can easily just say last. And there we go. Maybe if I named my new word variable correctly, there we go. That's better. And then once we get that last word, let's remove it. So we'll access that. We'll write remove. And there we go. So what this does is as it's pulling those new words off of the end of the list, it's going to remove them so we can make sure that we know once we've completed all the words in this list. And then instead of returning an empty string, let's return a new word. There we go. And now that's it for our word bank. Let's go over to our typer so we can set up our little references. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to give ourselves a word bank now. So then we'll say public word bank, call it a word bank. We'll initialize that to null. And then when we're sending that new current word, we're going to want to set our current word using a word that we're going to get from our word bank. And we'll use it using that get word function that we just wrote. And there we go. So when we start, we're going to set our current word via the word bank. And then we want to update the remaining word as well, which we went over in the last video. So let's go back up to this little muffin statement because we can get rid of that. All right, and there we go. Let's go back into Unity so we can hook up our references. All right, so let's go to our typer. Let's drag our word bank in there. And that's actually all we need to do. Let's hit play. And hopefully this works. So you'll notice that I wrote pancakes are delicious within that list. And the first string that we're getting is R, which is going to be the second entry. So we're going to write R. 
Delicious, I think I spelled delicious wrong. <laughs> and then pancakes, there we go. And that's actually it. Since we don't have any more words, it's not gonna show us anything. And that's pretty much it. We've created our basic typing mechanic and we've created a simple word bank that we can pull words from. So that's about it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you're interested in adding any more mechanics to this, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll see if we can make a video about it. So that's all from me. I'll see you in the next one.